Good morning, everyone. Donna Gray here, your Stamping Up demonstrator from Northern New South Wales, Australia. I'm excited to be crafting with you again this morning on my regular 10 a.m. Saturday morning live time slot. So please jump on, say hello, let me know where you're watching from. Hopefully you're going to get the notification to say that I've gone live. I absolutely love going live on a Saturday morning and crafting and having a chat with you all every Saturday. It's the highlight of my week. It really is. I, I totally enjoy sitting and crafting. What I actually did this week during the week, which was super, super fun, we actually, my team, so my Wild Heart Crafters team, so um, when people join Stampin' Up! and they join under me, they join my Wild Heart Crafters team. And what our Wild Heart Crafters team is all about is just a great crafting community. And we actually had the paper pumpkin, so the um, Box of Sunshine paper pumpkin, and we all got together and we did a Zoom call and we all just crafted on Thursday night. And it was super fun. It was pretty casual um, there was no real structure to what we were doing we just all got together people that had the paper pumpkin kit um, actually just grabbed their paper pumpkin kit and we crafted and we did alternate projects and we just had a super super fun time so that's what being a part of my team is all about and I thoroughly enjoyed it it was like doing my Saturday lives as as usual I can see a few of you popping on now so we've got Elizabeth we've got Janet we've got Bree we've got Sharon Mark Margaret, Amy and Vicky, welcome everybody. Um, thank you very much for joining. So once again, when you join, please feel free to share back onto your social media um, site. So your Facebook, um, please feel free to share back there so that other people that are friends with you on Facebook can get to jump in and join in on some crafty fun as well. So um, don't forget to hit that share button. And for people that hit that share button that live in Australia, you can go into a draw to actually win some prizes. So um, please make sure that you tell me that you've shared. I can't tell on YouTube whether you've shared or not. So please tell me the state that you're from and if you've shared. The other thing is, hey, Leanne, Christine, Annette, hello, Linda. Glenda. Hello, Lisa from the US. How are you? Um, Sue, Nina. Um, who else have we got? Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, or good evening to lots of people. Hey, Geraldine. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Helen. Um, so thank you, everyone, for joining. So we're going to have some super, super fun this morning, and I'm going to show you a little bit of when you've got a bit of a crafter's block, how our catalogs can help us so much. So I'm going to show you, I'm not saying that I had a crafter's block, but I want to show you how we can use some of the designs in the catalog and just change it up a bit and, um, and get our own design. So um, welcome everybody. I can see there's quite a few of you jumping on now. So first of all, what I wanted to show you is our brand new catalog, which is our, um, our mini catalog has gone live. So our beautiful August to December mini catalog has gone live. Thank you for sharing, Helen. Thanks, Vicky, for sharing. Um, so make sure you tell me what state you're from as well so that I know where I'm reaching in Australia and also overseas. I know I can't send things product overseas, but, um, but super, super excited that you have joined me. So our catalog has gone live. Now I apologize because I haven't done my draws lately for my new, um, for my giveaways, for my live video. So I've got a couple of people that are lucky winners and I just seen that one of the lucky winners is on here today. So um, for the live video lucky winner, Jill Semple, you are, and I don't know whether that's how I'm supposed to say your, your name, Jill, but you're from Western Australia and you were on my YouTube channel um, last Saturday, I think it was. So congratulations, you have won a Merry Hello stamp set. So Jill, you need to contact me with your um, postal address at bejeweled01 at gmail.com. So please send me an email with your address so that I can pop this in the post for you. So congratulations, Jill. You were my lucky giveaway from my live video last week. And for a viewer that actually just um, 
jumped on and commented and watched a replay of one of my videos, I've chosen Lorraine Whitehouse from Iluka, New South Wales. Now, Lorraine actually said to me in a comment that she was just getting back into crafting. And of course, she is totally hooked, which aren't we all. So Lorraine, if you watch this back later on, or if you're on today, you just need to email me at bejeweled01 at gmail.com. And Lorraine is the happy winner of the Hippo Happiness stamp set so congratulations ladies so that was jill semple and um lorraine whitehouse were my lucky winners so i don't forget i know that sometimes i've forgotten to do it so make sure when you're on here that you actually say where you're from whether you're new to crafting whether you've been crafting for a while hey annette thanks for sharing um and what state you live in because um you never know you may be one of the lucky winners and also feel free to go back through my videos and comment on my older videos as well now i really love it if you give me the thumbs up if you like the video because that helps me get my videos out there um, further. So please hit that thumbs up. If you like what I do, hit that thumbs up. So let's move on now. Um, so what I wanted to show you is when you've got a bit of a crafting block, this is what I do. I go through the catalog and I'm actually going to use, um, first of all, we're actually going to case this card or similar, like case it a little bit similar to what is on this card. Um, and then I'm going to show you an alternate project. So that's using the Christmas Means More stamp set. So this is a great stamp set. It's on page 29 in our catalogue, but we're going to case this card and I'm just going to show you, and this is fantastic for when you're using up some of your leftover designer series paper. It's great. Those little one inch strips you can use up quite easily. Um, and then I've, I'm also going to take this design here. I'm going to change it up a little bit, but I'm going to take that design there. So that's where I got my inspiration from this morning. So I know a lot of people say to me, where do you get your inspiration from? How do you know what you're going to do? Our catalogs are awesome. Now, if you don't have a catalog and you live in Australia and, and you don't have a demonstrator, please feel free to um, email me at bejeweled01 at gmail.com. And I would be happy to pop a set of catalogs in the post for you if you're interested. So that's if you don't have a demonstrator in Australia, I would love to earn your business. So I'm going to keep that page open because I actually want to have that there as my guide. So I'm going to start off with just the, the one that's there. And I decided that I would use a little bit of the felt um, sheets that we have. So it's called Festive Felt Sheet Combo Pack. Now, um, these can also be found on page 29 and we have three diff four different colors in here. We have Whisper White, we have, um, I'm sure it's Real Red, um, Coastal Cabana and Early Espresso. So, um, and it's super fun to have a little bit of um, felt to, to be playing around with. So this is the gorgeous stamp set that we're going to be using. Christmas means more. And I've got a sheet of our crumb cake cardstock. So um, this is cut at five and three quarter inches by eight inches and folded in half gives you a card front size of four inches by five and three quarter inches. And that's my go-to card size. It's not probably the standard size that everyone says, what is the standard size? It's my standard size. So um, now if you have any questions, um, Vicky said that she's bought the, um, the felt sheets but hasn't had the nerve to use it yet. Well, you know what? I'm getting the nerve to use it this morning, Vicky, because I haven't used them either. So bear with me. It could be a disaster or it could be really, really good. You never know. Okay, so what I did was I cut some strips ahead of time. So I cut a Whisper White, a, um, actually it's not Coastal Cabana, it looks like Mint Macaron and Real Red and I've got a sheet of foil as well. Now, I did play around with this because I thought it was um, fun. Now you may say, how did you cut the felt? I cut the felt using my little paper trimmer. So my cute little um, guillotine paper trimmer. And I'm actually going to cut them off a little bit smaller as well, because I want them to be a bit smaller on my card. Now I don't actually want them 
I actually want them bigger than four inches. So I think I'm going to go around there that looks like about five inches and then I'll use that one as my guide. So it cuts really well on the guillotine. The problem is the sheets are a little bit wider than what the guillotine blade is. So you either need to, um, you either need to cut the felt sheet down first of all, but you'll watch here. Sorry, it's probably off the screen. You'll watch here. It's super, super easy to cut with the guillotine. You ready? Like that. Super easy. So if you're thinking, how do you cut it? Because I was thinking the same thing. I was like, how am I going to cut that? Um, the guillotine. I did try our paper trimmer first of all, like, um, and it cuts the top layer, but doesn't cut the bottom layer. It probably would cut through if you did it up and down a couple of times, but I just felt like the guillotine was easier. So I'm just going to cut them off and they're probably going to be about five inches long. Now I'm going to change it up a little bit and I'm actually going to, um, I'm going to use one of them that I'm going to stamp on the felt. I know you're probably thinking, are you crazy going to stamp on the felt? But yeah, I could be, but um, I did I did give it a little bit of a trial run beforehand and it worked. So I'm going to give it a go. And then the others I might actually emboss and we'll see what they look like when we emboss them. So with the mint macaron one, I thought that I would use um, some shaded spruce and just stamp. Um, and I'm going to use like the little bell stamp here. And I'm going to grab a scrap piece of paper I have here. Now you got to remember that the felt is like quite furry. So when you go to stamp, you need to have your stamp inked up really, really well. Um, and hey, Rose, how are you going? Thanks for joining. Um, I, yeah, I, you have to have it inked up really, really well. Donna, I need some catalogs for my friends. Please, what is the code to order them? Nina, I will message you after I'm finished my live and let you know. Um, okay, so I'm just going to ink it up with my shaded spruce and I'm going to stamp it down on the felt. Yes, I'm stamping on the felt. Just to create a cute little pattern of these bells on the felt. I was thinking, am I crazy to think about doing this? But it worked. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go with it. So um, I did try with a lighter ink and I feel like, like we all know shaded spruce is quite dark. So it didn't come out quite as dark as what shaded spruce normally is. So make sure you go a darker ink. If you want the contrast, um, my suggestion would be to use the darker ink. Um, Liz said, how is my wrist? My wrist is not much better. Um, I'm actually going to go and have a cortisone injection put into it on about the 20, 21st of this month. I'm hoping that they're going to do it then. So now I'm going to grab some of our embossing folders, which I used these last week, which I absolutely love them. The wrapped in texture embossing folders. So I'm going to try this now i haven't done this before so we will see if it works or we will see if it's a total flop but um i'm going to grab my new cut and emboss machine my brand new beautiful machine okay now i'm going to do the base plate now these are our thin embossing folders. So I'm just going to use our two plates and I'm going to pop in that felt. Now are we ready for this? I don't know if it's going to work. We will soon find out if it's a total flop. I just had that thought this morning after I got myself prepped. What about if I tried to emboss them? So let's see. Did it have an, oh yes, look, look. Can you see that? So um, that was in the embossing. Now let's use the spotty one on the white. 
And I'm also going to use probably the spotty one on my gold strip, foil strip as well. This is super exciting. <laughs> it's really fun when you, when you discover something like this, it's like, oh my God, that's so good. It worked. Nothing like trying something brand new on live video. <laughs> Christine's saying drum roll. I know, Christine. Like, can you believe it? Oh my God, look at that. Super, super fun. Yes, um, Vicky, I did see somebody the other day use it with the poinsettias. Gorgeous. I just have to say, absolutely gorgeous. Let's do our foil bit now with the dotty one. Um, so yes, it does work, Vicky, um, with the poinsettias, I've seen it. It looks absolutely stunning. All right, so there you have it. So Vicky, I challenge you, get your felt sheets out and use them, girl. Just saying. <laughs> you need to use them. Okay, so we have that, 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 and that. Now, I have a piece of Whisper White here. Now, they've actually done a bit of a, um, a colour wash on the background, so we will do that. I will use my mint macaron, and I'm going to use our water painters. And we have this super awesome water painter that is like a paintbrush, which is fantastic for doing really quick watercolor wash backgrounds. So I'm just going to squeeze my ink pad. <sighs> Vicky says that she hopes my injection works. Injected into two nerves in your abdomen in July. So far, so good. I know Vicky, I've had a lot of people um, that have asked me, that have said to me that it has been successful. So I'm hoping, here's hoping. All right, so I'm gonna pick up that ink and I'm just going to do a watercolor wash on that background. And I don't, it doesn't have to be anything too spectacular. So just like that, just to create a good background. Be careful because that is normal whisper white. So you don't want to load up too much water on the normal whis our, our normal whisper white for the simple fact that you don't want to, um, I need to clean that off. I need to pop that there. I'll clean that off in a little while. I haven't got, where is my chamois? Oh, here it is. I'll clean it off now. So um, one of the things is just run the water in your brush, run it and clean it on your chamois. And then it's good to go for the next time. Um, now you're excited. Yes, Vicky, yes. Do it and share it with me for sure. <laughs> um, Rose is saying she loves the dotty one. Yep, it's cute. All right, so I'm gonna pop that aside and I'll stamp on that in a little while because I want that to dry. Um, now, in the book, these are just arranged any willy-nilly way. So um, they're just arranged in some crazy patterns. So like so. Actually, I'm gonna put that gold one in there and then like that. So just arrange them how you think you want them to be. Doesn't have to be any way in particular. So I'm actually going to use, I think my Seal Plus. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Seal Plus. I'm not going to use it on the felt. I'm going to use a strip of it straight onto my card where I want that to sit. And then I'm going to stick my felt down into it. So you're gonna need, because it's felt and it's furry, we're gonna need something like fairly strong hold. And that that is going to hold that felt really well. Liquid glue I find is a bit, uh, you know, a bit scary to be using liquid glue. So I'm going to do that. And I'm also going to run some, you know, See, it doesn't work on that. So um, I'm just gonna run some there and that's going to pop that one there like that. This one here, 
I'm going to pop it down that way. So I'm going to get it mostly onto that card. So I'm just going to run a strip down there and mostly onto there. And then with our white piece, we can then run it down over our foil piece. So just like that. Now, I want to do something there. I'm feeling like um, I might just do liquid glue just underneath that. I know I went, it's air, eh, but we want it to just stick into there. And that will hopefully hold that. All right. And it doesn't really matter because if that's going to flap on our on our card, I don't think it will really matter. Now I really need to hit that with the heat gun and I don't have my heat gun plugged in at the moment. So can I find a PowerPoint just there? Bear with me while I just plug in my heat gun. Sorry, I forgot all about the embossed Sorry, the um, watercolour layer part. Yeah. I'll hook it in there. I really need PowerPoints like out on my desk somewhere. <laughs> So Carolyn says she had a cast off her hand yesterday and had hoped it would be two-handed again, but it's still in a splint till the end of October. I know, I know. And it's not nice when we can't use our hands, Carolyn, is it? Hey, Lynn, thanks for joining. Yes, um, Geraldine, I can't imagine that the punch would work on felt. I really can't. It would be too furry. Okay. I want to have this pretty dry because if I don't have it dry, then it's going to smudge. Yes, Carolyn, I'm, I'm with you. I know exactly how you're feeling. I mean, at least I can craft. I mean, it's it's it hinders me a lot with my crafting, but at least I can still craft. So I'm thankful for that. Pop that over there. All right, nice and dry. So now we'll grab our sentiment. And I think I'm going to stamp that just in my basic gray. And the sentiment says, every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. I think that's really, really cute. So I'm going to do that just in our basic gray. And I'm going to grab my mouse, my pierce mat because we want to get a really good impression. And I'm also going to grab my scrap piece of paper because this is a brand new stamp and I haven't used it before. Now that's a little bit of a hint when you go to use a brand new photopolymer stamp, ink it up and smoosh it a little bit with the ink on it so that you get a really nice inked up version, okay? And even that, it can still go a bit more. <laughs> Carolyn says she's been ordering lots of supplies just waiting there. I know, I know. Well, hopefully it will happen soon for you, Carolyn. Okay, so let's stamp that down in the middle there. I hope that went all right. Every time and a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. That's cute. I did smudge it there a little bit, but I'm going to go with it. It's all good. All right. Um, they do have a bell die on there. 
Okay, so let me see if I can find those bells. What are they called? Um, yep, I did. Let's see if we can do some cute little bells. So this is the Cherish the Season and it has some bell dies in here. Hmm. I think I can cut that cute little bell out of some gold. That sounds like a great idea to embellish that a little bit more. I'll bring back in my cut and emboss machine. Now for this one, I'm going to need the base plate. So number one, number two, and two lots of number three, and some gold foil. which I have a scrap just here, there. And we'll cut out two of those. All four are movie quotes. Okay, well, there you go. Geraldine's just said all four are movie quotes. I have heard that every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. I've heard that many times. Let me see what the others were. Let me see. Now that you've told me that, let me see. Maybe Christmas perhaps means a little more. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. I believe it's silly, but I believe. So... Tell me, who knows the movies that they're out? Come on, Geraldine. So Geraldine says that all four are for movie quotes. So tell me, what are the movies? Does anyone know? Let's have a bit of a guessing game, because I don't. <laughs> so does anyone know? Type it in the comments if anyone knows um, what the quotes are. Let's put them here in view so we can see. All right, let's not lose that bell. We'll put that back in there. All right, so we just need a bit of, um, I've got some twine here, just some linen thread. So I'm going to pop that up onto some dimensionals. So. I'm going to try and do this. Um, there. And maybe there. Will that work? Please tell me that will work. Yep, it will. So the reason why I did that was I was trying to get the dimensionals not to stick on the felt to actually stick on um, some of the cardstock. So I've straddled off the side so that it will actually fit on there like that. So we have that. That's looking cute. And then we have our gorgeous two bells. That I'm going to tie together with a bit of this. You know what? I'm going to stick them on and then I'm gonna tie them I'm gonna stick them on with some dimensionals. So like that and this one here, like that. And then I'm going to cheat. <laughs> I'm gonna do a double bow with my linen thread. Okay, so what have we got? The one I'm using, It's a Wonderful World. Hadn't been able to emboss or use my dies for a long time as my big shop broke, but I've new Stampin' Up! machine, Sue. Yes, I know, you said yours arrived. It arrived last week, didn't it, Sue? Um, okay, Glenda says, I only know it's a wonderful life. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is from Elf. Okay, 
It's a Wonderful Life, The Grinch, Elf. The bells do look great, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to do a little double bow now and I'm cheating. I'm just going to stick this on. It's going to look like they've got a bow and they're tied on, but I'm just going to cheat. One thing I found with my um, wrist problem is tying bows is harder to do and just getting the right angle to be able to tie a bow properly. All right, so I'm gonna grab a glue dot and I'm gonna stick that on with a glue dot. And I'm going to stick it right over where the hole is and it looks like I've tied them together. All right, so I think what will jazz this card up a little bit more would be some of our gilded gems. So our gilded gems you can find in our um, annual catalog. And I just think some gilded gems in through here, scattered through here, will look super, super cute. What do you think? How easy was that? Strips of cardstock and a card base. How easy was that? Super, super cute. Give me the thumbs up. If you're liking what I'm doing, give me the thumbs up. All right, okay, so now I'm gonna do a bit of a changed up version of that. So let me bring in, I decided that I would use our gorgeous, beautiful autumn. Now the beautiful autumn stamp set goes with some punches. So you can purchase them in a bundle and you will get the three punches plus the stamp set. And I've got these cute little acorns. Now I've got the strips of cardstock here and I don't know what I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm just winging it at the moment, but I thought I'll use some different cardstock. So you uh, design a series paper. So you can just see how different you can get with the look. So that comes in a bundle. So you save percent, 10 percent when it comes in a bundle. Okay, so I've got mint macaron as my, um, thank you for the thumbs up everyone. I've got mint macaron as my card base. So once again, cut at five and three quarters by eight inches. So I'm gonna fold that in half. And this one, I might change up a little bit. So seeing we did this one portrait style, we might try one landscape style. So I've got a couple of pieces of designer series paper here, all cut. And you can see that it coordinates really, really well with the mint macaron, which I think is great. So um, I'm going to probably cut those down because they need to be a bit smaller. So I need to have them. I'm thinking about that length there. So we will see what that length is on our little trimmer. Okay, about three and a quarter inches. I'm gonna cut them all at three and a quarter inches. So we've got one there, one there. So this is honestly a great way of using up your scrap pieces of designer series paper. So don't ever, don't ever throw those little pieces away. You never know how you can use them in your crafting. Three and a quarter. We might get two of these. That, can I get two? Yes, two. Okay, let's see if we've got enough for that. So we've got one that way, maybe one there like that. This one, this one. This is actually reminds me of my zebra card that I did just recently. This one and this one. So what do you think? Nice little pattern there. 
You didn't purchase a bundle, but you did get the DSP. It's gorgeous. I know, Mary. I agree. I, I totally agree. It is gorgeous. Okay. So I'm going to change this up a little bit as well. I feel like I want to cut them at a bit of an angle because my zebra card was really, really cute at an angle. So I'm going to try cutting these at a bit of an angle. So I'm going to, with this one, I'm just going to, with my scissors, just trim it down at an angle. And with my um, seal plus, pop it on there and set that just like that. Okay, this one, I'm going to same angle again. So trim it a little bit and pop it there. That looks good. Okay, so then this one, I'm gonna trim at the opposite way, the opposite angle, so like that. And I'll pop that on. Okay, this one, I think I'm gonna trim this way. And I think I'm gonna pop that one up on dimensional. So we'll do that. I was thinking, why have I got two of the same pattern, but I forgot I'm using the reverse side. <laughs> what have we got? Janet saying, all hoarders are crafters and all crafters are hoarders. Exactly. <laughs> so true. So true. Okay, so like that. This one here, I feel like I want to emboss this layer. So let's run that through the embossing machine. And I think maybe the little dotty one again. I don't know. We'll see what I've got here. So we'll bring in our cut and emboss machine. I'm trying to get so used to calling it that. The cut and emboss machine. Okay. Now, the next question is... <laughs> Where did I put the embossing folders? I thought they were like right beside me, but they're not. Oh, I put them away. Duh. <laughs> did I or didn't I? Yes, I did. Okay, so we'll put that little one just through the embossing folder. And I'm using just the textured one this time. Oh. So just the base plate, so number one and two of the number threes with our embossing folder sandwiched in between. One of the main things to remember when you're embossing is always put the folder, put the fold of your folder going through the embossing machine first so that you don't break the spine of the folder. And always make sure that you have a plate sitting on top of your embossing folder. If you've ever had an embossing folder that is curled up like a duck's bill, the reason that it curls up like a duck's bill is because you haven't, you've put it through the embossing machine without the, um, without the, the plate on top and it curls up your embossing folder. So be really, really careful that you don't do that. Okay, so this one, I'm actually not even going to cut this one. I'm going to leave it the way it is. So I'm just going to run some Seal Plus down that one and I'm going to scoot that in underneath there, like so. And then this one, I think I'm just gonna go at a jaunty angle like that. And I think I'll pop it up as well. Um. Oh. Yes, no, I haven't got it that stripey way. And I'm going to trim it at an angle. So I'm thinking I want it to go that angle that way.
I know. Um, someone's just calling it the boss. <laughs> Lynn's saying someone should give the machine a cute name. I said, someone I know is just calling it the boss. <laughs> I'd like to think I'm the boss, but anyway. <laughs> All right, so then what I thought I would do is with our stamp set. Lordy, lordy, everything's going missing off my desk here. So with our stamp set, we'll stamp. Um, my heart is grateful for you. I think that's a really, really nice sentiment. So we'll grab that out. pop it onto a block. It's got great scripty font this as well. Um, I find that it, um, it looks really, really cute. And I feel like that is way too big. I feel like I wanna cut that down a little bit. Although no, I'm gonna deck, uh, yeah, I do need to cut it down. Sorry, need to cut it down. It's too big. All right, so we might cut it down to two inches by maybe three inches. What do you think? Two inches by three inches. That's going to fit that nicely. So, yeah, I think that's a great idea. If I do say so myself. Okay, and I'm going to grab my Early Espresso ink. And once again, I'm going to smoosh that. It's a brand new stamp that I haven't used before. So ink it up, smoosh it around, do it a couple of times, then stamp it to see if you're going to get a really nice stamp, which I am. So that will be good. Ink it up. Okay. Just gonna go there like that. Now, the reason that I've done it off to the side like that is that I need to grab a scrap piece of cream. Do I have any? Let me see. Um, no, I just grabbed some cream cards. Stop, sorry. Oh, there's a scrap. Okay. Now I'm going to grab. I'm thinking this cute little leaf. So we might ink, grab that onto a block and maybe ink that up with our mint macaron. So we'll stamp that. And then I'm going to grab the cute little acorn. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to grab the leaves. So these are two-step, two-stage, uh, two-step stamping. So... I'm going to go early espresso with this leaf. And then I'm going to go crumb cake, I think. Pour the color over it. Line it up, stamp it down. Okay, so then we've got another leaf in here, the maple leaf. So I think I'm gonna do that one in 
Oh, I'm thinking Cajun craze. Or is that how we say it? Cajun craze? I always say it the wrong way. Cajun craze, Cajun craze. Okay. Um, oh, cinnamon, so no. Cinnamon cider. No. I'm going to do the that. So I'm going to ink it up in um, any news on the release date. Stampin' Up, Cut and Emboss Machine. Um, are we talking about... Um, the release date for the small one, Janet. Um, if you're talking about the small one, the release date has not been released just yet. We're still waiting. They did say that by the end of this year, hopefully by the end of this year. So I'm just going to stamp off with that. Yes. So I'm going to stamp off and then stamp over the top. And I may be, not be real good at lining these up because it's a little bit hard when you're standing over the top, but we're going all right. So let's punch out that little one. Like so. Let's grab the other punch for the maple leaf. Like so. Now this one here, I am going to have to uh, cut out by hand, fussy cut, but that's okay. We can do that. Let's cover up some of these ink pads first so I don't end up with ink everywhere all over me. Yeah, the mini, I thought that's what you were asking, Janet. Yeah, as far as I know, um, end of this year by the end of this year. So um, I haven't heard any anything else other than that. So I'm just going to fussy cut this out with my scissors. And it's not a hard one to fussy cut out because it's only got three leaves. She says as she makes a mess of it, but anyway. Like so. And remember when you fussy cut, always to be moving your cardstock and just squeezing the blades of your scissors. Okay, so there we have, that one's really bad. I need to go back in. These are the things that I'm finding with my wrist. It's really hard because I don't have the movement in my wrist that I would normally have to be able to rotate things, but it's okay. I just trimmed it up and it's not too bad. So there we have it. So those three cute little pieces. All right, so let's get that put together. I'll get rid of that because we don't need that anymore. So I think what I'm going to do is I want that to sit up there and I want it to actually like sit off the edge of that sentiment layer. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of my Tombow glue and I'm going to do actually my silicon mat trick with my glue because that's a little bit fine and hard to handle. So liquid Tombow, silicon mat, squeeze a bit of glue up in the corner. Use your sponge and then pop it onto the back. Oh, and that is gonna hang over, but that's okay. That glue will dry. It's all good. All right, so I'm going to Pop that down there like that. Um, yep. 
that looks good. And then I'm going to, with these leaves, pop some leaves in like so. That's looking quite cute. I might actually, seeing I've got the glue there, use that for the leaves so I don't have to worry about popping some glue on the back. So we'll pop one leaf like that. And this one like that. And then what I want to do is I want to pop one of the cute little acorns on because I think it will just finish that off really, really nicely. So we have these cute little acorns, which are super, super cute. So I'm just going to grab one of those and I'm going to grab our linen thread again. Okay. And I'm just going to pop some linen thread through this. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna wrap the linen thread around so I'm just going to, with my Seal Plus, pop some Seal Plus there, wrap the thread in the end. And it's going to go in between there, but we're still gonna be able to see the Grateful For You. So wrap it around. And then with my little acorn, we want the little acorn to sit around about there. But that's okay. I'm just going to wrap that around and stick it back into my seal plus and cut it off. Okay, so we've got that. And then I'm going to move my little acorn along and then I'm going to grab some more of my linen trim and make a cute little bow. I might do a double one actually, but a little tiny double one. So with the linen thread too, if you find that it's really quite curly because it's come off that spool, just run your fingers along it and it straightens it out. Okay, it takes a bit of that curl out. Sorry, I haven't been watching the comments. What's happened with your cat, Jen? Tell me, what did I miss? What did I miss? Um, yes, Nina's saying that she would love to get the mini machine because she thinks it would be great to pack up and take to her mother's um, and craft at her mother's. And that's what I think a little mini machine is fantastic for. Um, those crafting on the fly or racing over to your friend's place to um, oh, try that again, Donna, undo that. Sorry, try that again. I missed one of the loops. I still missed what happened, Jenny, to your cat. What did I miss? Your cat could have asthma, really? Okay, so tie this bow again. And here we go. The struggle is real, people. Now you're gonna see where I struggle to tie bows with my wrist. I always struggled with twine anyway. <laughs> now I struggle worse. <laughs> Okay, so I want a cute little bow. I only want it tiny. I don't want it to overpower this bit on the front too much. Oh, okay, he's beating Kaz up because Kaz is getting weaker. 
the Berman may have lymphoma. Oh no. I hope it's going to be all right. All right, so then I'm going to pop that on there. Can you see that with a glue dot? And the glue dot and the bow is then gonna hold my little acorn there. Acorn there. Acorn. Acorn. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that there. And pop my acorn into there as well. So how cute does that look? Look at that. Cute as a button. All right, so let's bring our card back in and let's pop that on. So there you go, like look at that for just a different version. So I'm just gonna pop some dimensionals in around that where I've got the other layers popped up. So I can pop a dimensional there and another one there and I can pop two there. It is quite nice, isn't it, Annette? Annette just said that that looks lovely. I just, I just think it's got some great little elements, this beautiful autumn. Um, great little elements just for um, not too overpowering. There we go. My heart is grateful for you. How cute. So there you go, two different versions of the similar layout. But that's what you can do. You can change it up and get a similar... Um, a, a different look, totally different look, just by changing it from portrait to landscape. So give that a try. If you haven't tried that, if you've got a favourite layout, try swapping it around the other way into like um, landscape or portrait. If you're doing a landscape one, try it in portrait and see how you go. Um, original star Jimmy Stewart and Donna Reed. What are we talking about now? Are we talking about the movie? It's a Wonderful Life movie. <laughs> All right, so a little bit of an ad break here. I just wanna let you know, we have this awesome get and go starter kit. So if you're brand new to crafting or if you've just got back into crafting or you love crafting products, our starter kit is an awesome deal. Now, I, a lot of people say, I don't wanna join Stampin' Up! because why would I wanna join Stampin' Up! I don't wanna sell, I don't wanna hold parties. You don't have to sell and you don't have to hold parties. I'm here to tell you that you can wholly and solely join just to get a discount. So during the month of September, they've sweetened the deal a little bit. You get some card kits to the value of, uh, sorry, to make eight, 16 cards. You also get two stamp sets, which the stamp sets I had right here. Oh, I had it, um, oh, here. So you get these two stamp sets. So you may want to have a look at what they're like. So much love and Queen Anne's lace. So, um, and you also get a pack of rhinestones. So you get card kits to make 16 cards. There's video tutorials and everything that go with the designs. There's like four designs um, and you make four of each. I think that's how it is. I'm positive there's four designs. So much love Queen Anne's lace and so much love stamp sets and you get a pack of embellishments. All of that on top of choosing your $235 worth of product. So I'm just saying, if you wanna be a part of a crafting community, I've already had a couple of people take me up on the offer, which I think is fantastic. You only pay $169, ladies. If you want your crafting supplies at a discount, you need to join my Wild Heart Crafters team. Now that is only available to for people to join my team in Australia. If you're overseas, you need to find a demonstrator um, that lives in, not in your area, but in your country that can sign you up. So it's an awesome deal. So please make sure that you don't miss out on that um, and get in and get some great bargains. All right. Now, I've got another card. So once again, as I said, I use my catalogue as my crafting inspiration. So this card here, I looked at that and I thought, you know what, I could make a card similar to that as well and step it up a little bit um, and get a great, um, a great card as well. And I could change up what I'm using it with. So what I decided to do was to use our Joyful Holly stamp set. Now I'm using the postage 
um, punch. So it's the scallopy rectangle punch. I've got a couple of ribbons here, which are, we've got to work out what color ribbon we're going to use. And I've got some paper here. Now I'm positive that this paper, I hope I've got it right, is from the Tis the Season pack. I'm sure that's where it's from, Tis the Season. It's double-sided paper, it's beautiful paper. Um, it's six by six paper, but some stunning uh, patterns in it. The Joyful Holly stamp set is gorgeous. It's got these beautiful, gorgeous holly, um, holly leaves and it's a two-stage stamp set as well. So you get to color the, the leaves with the, um, with the stamps. So you do the outline and then, and then color the rest. So I thought I would do a similar card to that in the catalog. So once again, I've got Cherry Cobbler cardstock as my base and it's cut at five and three quarter inches by eight inches. And I'll fold that in half. Okay, and use my bone folder, crease it nicely. So then I've got this piece of designer series paper. Now, what I thought I would do to change it up a little bit was just to add some strips of gorgeous gold foil to the edges of that. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to grab my seal plus and I'm going to go down the edge of that paper like so. Then I'm going to grab my foil and I'm just going to um, carefully line that up on the edge of that paper. And I'm just going to get just a sliver of gold coming out from behind. Can you see that? So you just get a slither of gold coming out from behind. Look at my inky fingers, I'm a mess. All right, so then I'm gonna do that on the other side as well. So that and then turn it over and line it up and just get that slither of gold peeking out. So like that. And you can see you've got a gorgeous piece of designer series paper. Can you see how that's just changed it up a little bit? In the catalogue, they've just got the straight designer series paper glued down onto um, the front of the card. And I wanted to, to change it up a little bit. Also too, I wanna to change up the card base a little bit as well and add a little bit more oomph to that. So I'm actually going to take um, some Cherry Cobbler ink and I'm going to mount up this gorgeous poly stamp. One of them. Okay to a block like that. All right, so then what I'm actually going to do is I'm just gonna do tone on tone and I'm just going to add some beautiful holly and I need to get my pierce mat because I'm just looking at that and it's not stamping properly. So hence why you need a pierce mat, but it's okay, that's gonna get hidden even underneath what I've got anyway. So I'm just gonna go round the edges and ink that up and get some gorgeous tone on tone stamping like so all right so these ones here didn't work real well but that's and because i didn't have my mat underneath me so tucked up you can give me a wrap over the knuckles because i did that but it's okay because that's going to cover it so it's all good we don't have to worry um, now I'm going to clean off that stamp because I now want to stamp it and we'll colour it. All right, so I'm going to clean that off. I'm now going to stamp it on my Whisper White piece here. And I'm going to stamp it with my shaded spruce to get a really nice green look. So shaded spruce and I'm going to stamp one there and a stamp another one there and maybe another one could go i don't know about there because i'm going to cut these out with the punch so it's all good 
So then I want to grab, I think I'm going to go pear pizzazz so we get a lighter look. And hopefully I'm going to get the right combination of colour for the leaves here. And I don't know because I haven't used this before, so I'm hoping I've got the right one. And I'm going to ink that up in pear pizzazz. And I have. I thought I did. Okay, I need to get over the top of this. And you're probably going to see my hair in here because I need to line these up really nice. And you can see through the photopolymer stamp. And I didn't line it up too good, but that's totally okay. I'm going to stamp off on this one and then go. Let me see whether that looks better. So lining it up and stamping it on. Oh, I like it stamped off better. Okay, lining it up. Just take your time. This in the Stamparatus, if you're worried about lining it up, in the Stamparatus would work really well. That's okay that I've got a darker one, but um, I actually might go back over it with the lighter look and see if that makes a difference, just to fill that in, because I stamped it not so straight. And I'm still not going to stamp it straight there. Fill it in a little bit, but that's okay. Now I'm going to take my postage stamp punch and I'm going to post and I'm going to punch them out. So I'm going to punch this one out like so. I'm going to punch that one out like so and this one. Okay, now for the little berries, I'm just going to grab my cherry cobbler, my cherry cobbler blend, and I will just colour in those cute little berries. There is berries in there that you can stamp as well, but I feel like I would have more control if I just use my cherry cobbler. Is this cherry cobbler? Oh, it's dark real red. No, hang on, I want cherry cobbler. I don't want that one. Okay. Hey Linda, you just tuned in. Well, I'm glad you've caught me. This is this is probably going to be my last card, but that's okay. Now, please everyone, if you want to be in the giveaway, please type in the state that you live in and share my video so I can pick a winner and I'm going to pick a few winners today. So type in the state that you're watching from and if you're lurking in the background, and you want to win a prize, then you need to comment. You need to tell me what state you live in and you need to share my video back onto social media. Okay, so we've got those three there, which I think are really, really cute. Okay. So we have that, we have that, and we have these. I might put that one in the middle. Okay. Although, no, I want to stamp a sentiment. I've mucked up here. Hang on, I grab another piece of Whisper White. I wanted to stamp a sentiment in the middle. Silly me. <laughs> um, Heather says that she's in Canada, no winning for her. No, but, you know, I can always send a card. If you're from overseas, I can always send a card. So... Still feel free to, um, to comment. Okay, so I think I'm going to do May Your Season Be Merry and Bright. Okay. And we will do that in, I think, Cherry Cobbler. Okay, so we'll do that. And I also want to do 
a little bit of um, a little bit of holly in the edge of that. So I'll just use the shaded spruce again. And I should be using my pierce mat. You can all go mad on me, but that's okay. I'm not. <laughs> that and the pear pizzazz. Get off. And we will line that up. Like that. And then I'll punch that out with the punch. I'll grab, get rid of these out of the way. And grab my punch. And punch that out. You had to get your seven-year-old grandson to show me how to share the video, <laughs> Liz. You crack me up. Do you know what? And that's the thing. They know, don't they? <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, that makes me laugh. Okay. All right, so now I'm actually going to, I need for you to tell me which ribbon am I going to use? Am I going to use the old olive ribbon or am I going to use the, um, I don't know whether it's Poppy Parade or Real Red, which ribbon? So type in the comments and tell me which ribbon that you want to, um, that we will use. Tell me in the in the comments. Sorry, I'm still trying to look at the comments. Ah, where are we? For some reason, my comments aren't scrolling. There we go. The red ribbon says Mary. Linda's saying that my videos are so inspiring. <laughs> Anik is saying both. Green, old olive, old olive, old olive. It looks like old olive is winning. Old olive. Okay, we're going to do old olive, people. It's winning. All right, so we need to do a zigzaggy ribbon behind here. So I'm just going to use my Seal Plus. Oh. Okay, and then I'm going to do that zigzaggy ribbon. So um, they've got it going sideways. Oh, we could do it sideways, I suppose. We could go that way, that way, and then that way, and then back that way. What do you think? Cute? All right. So now let's put this baby together. All right, I'm going to use my Seal Plus on the back of this one. Oh, believe it or not, I have a fly in here buzzing around my head. Come on, seal plus work there. Well, look at that. Seal plus doesn't want to work on the foil sheets. Look at that. Come on. There we go. Just wanted to be cantankerous. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to pop that in there. 
on there. Now it's going to, it's going to overhang a little bit. I'm just going to trim that off. It's only overhanging a tiny, tiny little bit, but that's going to bug me if I don't trim it off. Oh, go again. There we go. That's better. Yes, we're only as old as we feel, aren't we, Anika? Anika's saying I'm young, 60. You have ribbon, but never use it. Not been game. Well, Linda, there's a really quick, easy way. Just popping the double-sided, sorry, the um, seal plus on the back and just zigzagging. Super, super easy. So I'm now going to pop those all up because we want dimension on our card for sure. So I'm just going to pop some dimensionals on the back. And same with that one. Um, the DSP, Jenny, I'm positive it's from the Tis the Season. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's where it's from. The Tis the Season. So now I'm just going to line these up so that I get them sitting exactly where I want them to sit. So I get them um, nice and even. Um, yeah, so um, Anika is saying using a fork to make your bows. It is nice to see ideas with stamp sets, isn't it, Helen? I agree. Of course you are, Jane. Jane says, I'm young too, 83, ha ha. I told you, Jane, you're only as young as you feel, as old as you feel. So true. <laughs> that is awesome. I love that. See, now Anika is saying you are young, Jane. My mother is 88. So there you go. My mother's uh, 75. Okay, so we've got that. Now I want to bling that up. So I'm going to do the Gilded Gems again because we definitely need a bit of bling. So let's do some gorgeous Gilded Gems. I'm just trying to find my scissors in my mess here. Oh, there they are, sitting up there. All right, so we will go there. We will go in there. And we will go out there. No, I don't like that one there. Can I get it off? Um, maybe up there. Actually, I'm going to do a few more because I want this to be pretty blingy. Let's go a few more just for something to do. <laughs> Why not? Especially for Christmas, we need bling. I agree. And you know what? I think something that would bling it up even more is some of our gorgeous Wink of Stella. Can I find my Wink of Stella? Here's one here. Okay. Bit of wink of Stella on our leaves. Why not? It's starting to feel like Christmas. I know it's a long way off, but it's starting to feel like Christmas when you start making cards like this. Oh, I've missed a berry there. We need to get that berry colored. We can't have a colorless berry. Okay. Look at that. One berry there, missed. Colour it, there, got it, got it. Yes, the Gilded Gems, Mary, are beautiful, aren't they? 
All right, so let's pick a winner. We need, type it in the comments, people, where you're from. Tell me the state, where you're from. Tell me if you're new to crafting or you're an avid crafter. Tell me what type of crafter you are. If you think you're a casual crafter, if you think you're a, a beginner crafter, if you think that you're an avid crafter. So type in the state that you're from and the level of crafting that you think you do. So while that's happening, I'm just going to bring in the cards that we've made today. So we've made this one here using the Joyful Holly stamp set. We've done this one here using the beautiful Autumn stamp set. And we've done this one here using a combination of the Christmas Means More and the Cherish the Season sets as well. So um, they're absolutely super, super fun. Um, so, okay, so let's pick some winners. We want some winners. Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. Type in the comments, share everybody. You need to be sharing to be in the prize winning. Let me see, where did I put my prizes I had out? Okay, I had them all here. Oh, here they are. Okay. <laughs> Annette says, Victoria Casual Crafter started three years ago. Sue Beasley, average, average crafter. Average or avid, Sue? Curly Top is Kalgoorlie, Western Australia. Helen Rose, avid crafter. I know you're avid, Helen. Colac is Elizabeth. Um, Lynn's casual but intense crafter, <laughs> Cheryl Dove, what's Cheryl, um, an addicted crafter, just love, yeah, I know, Cheryl, I know, it's wonderful to be like that, isn't it? Um, Karen Ashton, who is in my team, um, would love to be avid working full-time prevents this, I know, I know, I agree. Um, We've got Kay Bellet. She's an avid crafter from Queensland. We've got Diane that's watching from, she's been stamping for 10 years. Well, congratulations, Diane. Mandy, where are you from? Not much of a, not much of a rafter. <laughs> not much of a crafter, Elizabeth. I think you would be. You're a bit of both, you think? I know it's been hard in lockdown. I do understand. I totally understand. Um, okay, so Jane Holmes, you're going to be the lucky winner of A Wink of Stella. So congratulations, Jane Holmes. So Jane is from New South Wales. So Jane, I'm going to pop your name on those if I just find my sticky note. So congratulations, Jane Holmes from New South Wales. <laughs> and she says she's a Stampin' Up! Tragic Stamper. And you know what? Aren't we all? Aren't we, aren't we all tragic stampers? <laughs> just kidding. Um, it's nice to be um, like have something in this time of need to be able to escape from what's going on in the world, I think. So So congratulations, Jane. You need to email me at bejeweled01 at gmail.com. And I'm going to pick another one. So is there still people watching? Who else is watching? I'm going to pick another one. So actually, the next one that I'm going to pick is Linda Kirkpatrick. And I have a prize for you, Linda. I have the blue adhesive backed gems. So congratulations, Linda. Uh, sorry. Oh, where was I? Kirkpatrick. Linda Kirkpatrick. So you have won the blue adhesive gems. Do you want one more giveaway, people? Um, Linda Kirkpatrick. Now you all have to you have to email me at bejeweled01 at gmail.com to claim your prizes. I need to know your address to be able to send it out to you. Um, who else do we have? Um, and a final prize will go to Helen Rose. Congratulations, Helen. I've got the Peaceful Poppies Elements. So congratulations to Helen Rose. You are the winner of the Peaceful Poppies Elements. So congratulations, everybody. Um, let me go there. 
Helen, congratulations. So we've got Jane Holmes, we've got Helen Rose and Linda Kirkpatrick, uh, the lucky winners this morning. And I hope that you've actually enjoyed my lovely crafting session. I will pick a winner of someone that watches the replay. So if this is the first time that you've watched me, please feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on that bell notification so you get notified every time I go live. I go live here at 10 a.m. every Saturday morning. So um, I would love to hear from you. If you have any questions that you want to ask me, please feel free to drop a comment in below. These comments all disappear, so um, the live comments. So um, please, if you're watching back the replay, please pop a comment in, say hello, let me know where you're watching from, and please share the video. It helps me get out to more people. So thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful weekend. I hope you all stay safe and enjoy your weekend. And I will catch you all same time, same place here, 10 a.m. next Saturday morning on YouTube for some more live crafting. So thank you for spending an hour and a bit, hour and a half with me this morning. Till next time, everyone. Bye.